Hello, welcome to Vedial Vagparai. In this video, we are going to see about neutron capture reaction. This particular video is based on CSIR net December 2023 question. Uh, this question that we are going to discuss is also a type of nuclear transmutation reaction. Let us see the question first. In the following nuclear reaction X, Y and Z respectively are in the sense there is a nuclear reaction scheme that is given here and they are asking us what is X, Y and Z. The options for X, Y and Z are presented here. So when I started to look at this particular question, I thought I will also include some important details relevant to this particular equation that is listed here. So there are three things that we will see in the video. One is about nuclear, one is about neutron capture reaction. The second one is about the application of this particular reaction and the third is about how to solve this particular question. So let us first see what is neutron capture. So from the word itself we know it is a radiative capture wherein we, uh, we see there is a neutron that is captured and as a result gamma radiations are emitted along with the product that is formed. And uh, this particular reaction is alternatively called as radiative capture or N gamma reaction. So what is the definition of a neutron capture reaction? The radiative capture or neutron capture is a reaction in which the incident neutron is completely absorbed and the compound nuclei is formed. So uh, what happens here is there is a neutron that is targeting a nuclei. So you, this particular nuclei absorbs this neutron and that is why this is called as a compound nuclei. And this compound nuclei which has temporarily absorbed the neutron becomes excited or uh, it is unstable and that is the reason why it is called as a compound nucleus. So, this nucleus then comes to the ground state by giving out radiation in the form of gamma rays. So, the gamma rays are emitted and the excited nuclei comes to the ground state. So, here we see the representation of uranium. Uranium 238 absorbs the neutron or captures the neutron and becomes uranium 239. So, you know neutron does not have a charge but it has a mass. So that is why one is written on top and then it becomes uranium 239. So this uranium 239 is an unstable compound in the sense it is an excited compound which then gives out gamma radiation and becomes the uranium 239 which is the non-excited compound or the normal compound. So when we are talking about uranium you must know that the Uranium 238 is the naturally occurring uranium which is in major proportion and it is a non-fissile material that is it is it, it is not naturally radioactive. The radioactive component of uranium is uranium 235 which is 0.7 percent of the natural uranium that is available in nature. So this uranium 238 is a fissionable material or it is also called as a non-fissile material. So a fissile material is one which is directly radioactive and can be used to generate radioactive uh, nuclear reaction. Whereas a fissionable material has to be converted into a radioactive element for further use. So this particular isotope of uranium is the naturally occurring isotope which is used to generate the next level of reactions. So we will see what happens after uranium 238 becomes uranium 239 with the evolution of gamma radiation. So this uranium 239 is also unstable. So it will again give away some radiation and then become another element that is what we are going to see next. So this particular set of reactions where a neutron attacks an element which is fertile or fissionable and then neutron is captured by the element and then the element goes into the compound nuclear state. You see here uh, the mass number and the atomic number. 
So in this case, because the neutron has mass, the mass number increases by 1 and this compound nuclei emits gamma radiation and then becomes the um, species which is having an extra neutron in its nuclei. This species is an unstable species which is a short lived species will give out radiation in the form of beta rays and then will form another radioactive isotope. So, this kind of conversion okay, of a fissionable nuclei okay, to a fissile nuclei is uh, called as nuclear transformation, transmutation reaction. So, these are reactions wherein we can synthesize a radioactive nuclei from a non-radioactive nuclei by using neutrons, it is using thermal neutrons. So, these thermal neutrons are used to synthesize or to make radioactive nuclei which are starting materials for nuclear fission reactants in nuclear re reactions in nuclear reactors. So, these are also fuels in breeder reactors. So, now let us see the application neutron activation analysis. So, this is an analytical technique that relies on the measurement of gamma rays emitted from a sample that was irradiated by neutrons. The rate at which the gamma rays are emitted from an element in a sample is directly proportional to the concentration of that particular element. So, here in this particular example, we have used uranium 238, which is treated with the thermal neutrons and it formed uranium 239 with the emission of gamma radiation. So, this gamma radiation that is emitted can be studied and it is directly proportional to the concentration of the element. So, that is a, a wonderful thing because we can directly identify how much amount of the element is present in that particular given sample. So, there are a lot of advantages. Uh, the first advantage is multi element technique because it can be used to determine up to 70 elements and then it is a non destructive method and it does not have any uh, serious errors in the uh, estimation uh, and then it is a very highly sensitive uh, method and uh, it is precise and accurate. So, a small quantity of substance is enough uh, uh, and, it, uh, and it is uh, because it is a non destructive method precious elements can be very easily studied using this neutron activation analysis which is based on the neutron capture reaction that we have studied now. Now, let us see some of the formats of representing a nuclear reaction. So, these are the two forms of popularly used in representing a nuclear reaction. The first one is the long form or the normal equation form. And the second one is the short form of the equation. And so, here you see it is very understandable. So, in this particular reaction, you know uh, the left hand side of this equation, this is the left hand side uh, and uh, this is the right hand side. So, similarly in the short form you have the left hand side and you have the right hand side. So, the reactant is on the left hand side, the product is on the right hand side. So, the reactant is uranium 238, the product is uranium 239 and then the species within the bracket are the ones which are being uh, used in the reaction and then what is being formed as the byproduct. So, here in this particular reaction, the neutron is being used to convert uranium 238 into uranium 239. So, it is on the reactant side and the arrow is comma. Okay. So, in between them is the arrow and the arrow instead of an arrow here you have the comma to separate the reactant and the product. And then here we know gamma is the product that is formed. So, this particular nuclear re reaction is uh, scientifically represented by this notation. So, now let us go into the question. So, in this question uh, we see we are being asked uh, 
uh, what is x, y, and z. And we see here the first uh, answer that is x is all given in brackets. And now, as of now, we saw whenever we are seeing a nuclear reaction, we see within the bracket the reactant and the byproduct that is formed. So, here uh, we have to find out what is the reactant, what is the product, so that we can understand what is x, what is y, and what is z. So, already we have seen this uh, conversion uranium 238 becoming uranium 239. So, when you talk about uranium 238 becoming uranium 239, we know neutron is being used. Neutron has one mass, but it does not have a charge. <laughs> so, as a result, we see uranium 238 becomes uranium 239. That is the first one. But we know this is a neutron capture reaction. So, a gamma radiation is emitted. So, this particular first step is actually n comma gamma. And in the second step, what we see is neptunium is being formed. We know that in this particular case, there is a change to the atomic number. So, whenever there is a change, there is an increase in the atomic number, we must see how this increase has happened. Definitely, we know we have alpha, beta, gamma radiations or positron emissions which are possible. So, in this particular case, because we must see if it is only if it is a beta emission, wherein beta has a negative charge and it has a zero mass. So, there is no change to the mass number, but we see that the beta which is emitted along with neptunium uh, results in a balancing of the atomic number which is 92. The next reaction is neptunium to plutonium. Again, when you see here, uh, the plutonium, this has to be 9. Plutonium's atomic number increases by 1 from neptunium. Like the earlier case, this must also be a beta emission. Only then, uh, the atomic number balance will be right. <coughs> so, incidentally, what we must remember is neptunium was the first man-made transuranium element. So, when this neutron capture reaction was done, this element was found. So, this is the first man-made transuranium element. And plutonium is the second transuranium element and this was naturally found because all of these conversions lead to the stable isotope with this, which is plutonium 239-94. And this is, uh, this is the second naturally occurring element which was discovered by SIBO. This is made by man, this is discovered by SIBO. So, now coming to the answer. So, what we see here is N gamma is the first step and then followed by 2 beta decays. So, therefore, in the given options, option 4 is the correct answer. And this particular equation that we are seeing is a classical example of transmutation reaction and an example of neutron capture reaction which resulted in the formation of plutonium and this particular reaction is a popular reaction in fast breeder reactors wherein we know the fissionable uranium can be converted into a fissile plutonium. I hope you understood. Thank you.